it. So one quick note before I start, either over here somewhere or down below, I will put a link to one of my previous videos where I did painted vases. First step was prepping the glass containers. I'm going to skip that step, so if you want to refer to my video, go ahead, but I can tell you it's really easy. Just make sure that your jars are freshly washed, dried, and take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and coat the insides and let that dry. That simply just preps the um, inside for the paint. The paint I have is Martha Stewart's uh, multi-surface metallic acrylic craft paint and this is good on wood, glass, metal, or fabric, and it's in the shade Titanium. They have a ton of different colors that you can get to match your decor, or whatever you're gonna do. Um, I did mention in my other video that this paint tends to be a little bit thicker. That's why I have the brush really comes in handy. Um, but what you will notice when you coat the inside a little bit that you will get a slight brush stroke in the paint. So if you are looking for just a solid, solid coat of paint with no brush strokes, I'd recommend getting a little bit of a looser acrylic paint. Um, I kind of wanted this effect on there, so that's why I'm using this one. Okay, my paint is all shook up, and I'm just gonna open it. And all you're gonna do is just squirt a little bit, or however much you think. Just squirt enough on the bottom, or the sides. You're gonna coat it anyways, so it doesn't really matter. And as you can see, it doesn't really move super fast. When you move around the jar, the thinner paint, would um, you could actually coat the whole thing like that. So all I'm gonna do is take my brush in there and I'm just gonna start moving it around. I did experiment with this and I realized with two coats, it actually makes a crackle effect. I let um, the first coat dry enough and then um, came back a day later and did the second coat and it dried with a crackle effect, which was kind of cool and unexpected, um, but I liked it. So you're just gonna move the paint all the way around and up the sides. And all the way also, start working it up to the lip of the jar. That's what it's looking like on the outside. Don't know if you can tell, but see, you can just see how it, if you don't really coat it well, it gives a little bit of a streak. So you can just go back and fix those areas. This paint roughly takes about a good day to two days to dry. Now look from the outside and see the places you miss that you can go back and fix. This was the look I was wanting to achieve though with the silver paint. I kind of wanted a slightly not so perfect coat to the jar. Another thing about this paint is it doesn't really run. Um, with the other paints I've used, I've typically dried these things upside down, and when you move them, you'll, we will have some dripped paint. Um, with this paint, it doesn't really drip, and you put it on kind of such a fine coat that there's really not anything extra to come out. So the good part about it is you can still decorate this while it's wet. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now I'll move on to the little one. Same thing, just squirt a little bit in there. Start moving it around. Now for the fun part. So I have like um, just a regular sequin trim and it's like a turquoise color. I'm gonna put that around the edges of each container like that. So I actually will measure roughly about how much I need. Makes it a little bit easier to handle. And go ahead and cut it off. Then using my E6000 glue, which is actually really needing a replacement, um, I'm going to go ahead and put the glue along the edge, bit by bit. and press on gently the sequins. Cut off the excess. Now I'm gonna do the very same thing with this jar, only I'm going to put one row right here and then one row right above it. So I'm gonna do a double row.
So now if you want to jazz it up even more, which you don't have to, you could leave it like this and it would be perfectly fine. Um, I have these turquoise rhinestones in like three different sizes. I'm just going to add a few around each of the jars and add a little bit of sparkle. Um, I'm going to take this medium sized rhinestone and if any of you have watched my videos before, you know I kind of eyeball things. I don't really do approximate. So I'm just going to kind of guesstimate where I need to put that to be right in the middle. Press it gently on there, like that. And then I'm gonna take a smaller one. And go in between. So bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. Okay, so that's finished. I think it adds a little extra something than it needed. With this one, I'm just gonna use the larger rhinestones and the medium ones. Okay, so I can't put this in here right now to show you because the paint's still wet. So I'm gonna let this dry overnight. I will come back tomorrow and show you exactly how it looks all put together. So it's the next day. Both parts are completely dry. I have my cotton balls in here and then my Q-tips in the top. That just sets right on the top there. It's completely stable. It's not gonna topple over. Um, and I'm sure there's probably other uses you can get out of this for maybe like jewelry or other things, but I just think it makes a really cute and um, very glamorous touch to your bathrooms. I also wanted to show you one other thing. While experimenting with the paint, I went ahead and tried it on a wine goblet. So I did the same technique with the paint here, put the same sequins and jewels and then down at the bottom too. And as you can see, you could use this for a cotton ball holder or even you could use it for rings and bracelets and stuff like that. So anyways guys, those are just some ideas for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more DIYs and I will see you guys in my next video.